Hey everyone, Lucas here back again for another round of street photography with my trusty Ricoh GR2. Today I want to explore an area called Shimokitazawa, which is just a couple minutes away on the train, either from Shinjuku or Shibuya, both of them, from both of them you can get here real quick. It's, you know, it's just outside of downtown, but it's not quite downtown, it's still pretty busy, it's hopping, it's, you know, a lot of people around, a lot of bars, restaurants, stuff like that. It's a bit of a hipster neighborhood, I guess, there's like retro, you know, closed stores and all this stuff that I don't know anything about. You know, I'm just here for the, for the photography, okay? So we're gonna explore this area, do some street stuff, and I hope to give you guys some ideas of how to get the most of your Ricoh GR at night, which is a challenging time to shoot for any camera, just in general, it's, it's tough at night. Lots of difficult lighting conditions. So we're gonna do a lot of that, all right? Let's go, let's check it out. So my settings, right now, I'm using snap focus mode because it's dark, it's kind of hard to get the focus when things are moving. I'm on f2.8 and 2.5 meters is my snap focus distance. And those who've seen the snap focus video that we did recently for this channel, um, I could use the one or the full press snap, but in this case, since I know I want to use snap focus mode, I just have snap focus mode turned on. So it doesn't matter if I full press or half press, every photo is snap focus. I find that just less pressure on me. I don't need to worry about how I press it. I can think more about the timing and composition in this case, because I know I'm going to use snap focus. And when I'm walking around an area like this, what I'm really looking for, one of the main things that I have in mind is where's the light? Where's the good light? Um, just because, you know, something is interesting, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good photo if the light just doesn't work. Now, having said that, it's not like you need perfect light. I don't want to be, you know, sometimes people say, oh, the light's not good, the light's not good. Don't make that, in the, don't use it as a crutch. Like, if the light's not great, try to take the photo anyway. But what I'm just trying to keep an eye out for is that, that really nice light. So we have the shop windows with light kind of filtering out. And those scenes that have more contrast and like a gradation of light from dark or from light to dark are where, you know, it's going to result in better photos. The images will look better. They're just going to look more, have more depth and be less flat. Okay. Uh, silhouettes are also something I'm looking out for. If I get a silhouette in the image, that's going to look good. This is a nice scene. Okay. I like this. This is just a nice scene. I'm not really expecting to get like an amazing uh, street photo out of, out of this here. Now here, because nothing is really moving, I'm going to go to uh, TAV and a 60th of a second. Usually I'm using AV and a minimum shutter speed of 250 because I want to freeze the action, right? And having said that, because I'm doing a slower shutter, it means there'll be some motion blur, then that's a good time to try to get somebody riding their bicycle past. There we go. So it's got a nice distribution of lights and darks, as I said, and also nice little splashes of red here and there. Oh, here we go, two bicycles. Is that too much? I just snapped away, whoops. That was okay, that probably would have been better, the guy on the motorbike. Let's just try it one more time. Here we go, here's a nice bicycle coming with nobody else. The challenge I was facing just now, there was a lot of things going on at the same time. Boom. Okay, yeah, that's probably the, my favorite one. Nice and clean, bicycle, cool background. All right, and because I'm on a 60th, the ISO is only 1100, totally, you know, doable for a scene like this. It should edit out really nice. Okay, we'll keep going. Ah. Trouble Peach is closed. This is a, like a legendary retro bar, but it's closed today, the Trouble Peach. It's been around since like the 70s or something like that. So one thing is we're walking through these kind of really dark areas. Now, sometimes I'm, I'm trying to use snap focus as much as possible to save myself the trouble of trying to focus in these dark conditions. But when I do decide that I'm gonna use autofocus, just so you know, it's clear how I'm doing it, I'm using the pinpoint the center, you know, pinpoint mode, so it's, it's just a little point right in the center. And I'm trying to find things, if I'm going to focus on something, I'm trying to find things with contrast as much as possible, with as much contrast as possible. And see, even then, there we go, that's better. So you have to be sort of, you know, help your camera out and be sort of discerning about what you're actually going to focus on. Because if you try to focus on the wrong thing, let's get a little closer, then, you know, it's going to struggle. No matter what, camera you're using. If it's really dark and low contrast, it's not going to focus well. So I like giving it stuff to focus on, like for example, that sign up there, right? 
through much easier. So even in these dark conditions, it's no problem. There we go. Okay. Not the best scene, but sort of interesting. I like all these plants everywhere. It's got an atmosphere to it. There's definitely something interesting going on here. The question is, can I find a photo here? Something that actually works as an image. I'm going to go a little higher. Ah, okay. It's okay. It would be cool to get someone on these stairs maybe going up. That would, that would work nicely. But I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. So we'll just keep going. So here's kind of a cool scene. So, by the way, I should say that over the 10 or 12 years now that I've been in Japan, Shima Kitazawa has changed a lot. They really redesigned or like rebuilt, renovated the station, the train station here. So it used to look a lot different and I don't recall there being such a, a view of the platform. So this might be interesting. Maybe we're gonna shoot kind of people on the platform from, from outside here. And when a train goes by, that might create something interesting. Let me see if I can find a good scene. So I'm gonna go back to a, a 60th. And I'm not gonna use snap focus, I'm gonna use regular autofocus because it's very bright in there. Okay. And so yeah, that's working in terms of light and all that. I just wanna find like the right kind of person or combination of people. Maybe over here. Now I do have this chain link fence in the foreground. And it is possible because the camera's so small to just go right through the, the links like this. And I don't see them at all. But I think it's kind of interesting to use them, to use this element in the foreground to create some kind of extra drama in the scene, right? Yeah, and at this distance, the people walking by are not that motion blurred, a little bit, but not that much at a 60th because they're far away, right? So I'm just putting my camera, oh, here we go. There was like just one guy, but I wasn't ready. There we go, one guy again, oh, come on. Nice. And now the train's leaving back there, so that'll be nicely blurred. And the main guy's not moving. That was cool. What do we get? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Okay. That was really cool. That was really cool. I like that. Axel, you like that? I love it. Great. Yeah, this is, these are the kind of findings. I like this. Let's go slow though, and maybe like, oh, I missed that. But, but actually, I yeah, see that would have been too close. It was cool the other way around. I'm hoping that we can get something similar, but maybe not. I was hoping that from this end of the platform, hold on a second. There we go, I like that. And then I'm gonna just raise it up. I love how this dude is there and he can't, you can't see his face because it's directly behind the sign. Okay, sweet. Yeah, and that's actually really nicely lit. The light behind me, that's what I was saying earlier, it's brightly lit because of the, quickly before it goes, okay. It's brightly lit because of the, uh, the storefronts back there, putting out a lot of light, very nice soft light, and the train was well lit. So I was at f2.8, a 60th, and 500 ISO. Very nice, nice results there. The platform view from here is really nice. I gotta be really quick though, because I don't want to get you know, stuck in the middle here. That was cool, especially with the conductor in there about to get on the train. But let's get out of here because it's, you know, it's kind of scary to be in the middle of the tracks. Even when uh, there's nothing coming. Let's go quick, be quick about it. Maybe a little more this way. Okay. And I 
do believe I saw a train, there we go, down the track, so I was expecting it to come down. And again, I'm just thinking where, how to frame it, that's kind of a nice frame. I'm gonna get lower, and hopefully this guy over here stays in the right place. I'm gonna use autofocus on him. And you know, even without the train, I'm liking this scene, this is nice. Still on a 60th, f2.8, 1 over 60. So I want the train to leave out of the left side of the frame. It'll create a nice motion blur. And then I'll have this, this dude here on the right. But I think other people are gonna come in to the scene, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, oh well, you know, that's what happens. That's street photography for you. Still gonna follow through and get the shot, as I planned it. And now I get this little kid. Okay. So was it what I wanted? No. Was it okay? It was okay. It was worth a try. Okay, we're gonna keep going. There's more trains coming, but they're on the other side of the tracks. So I think we're gonna move on. This area is kind of cool. This is like a brand new thing. I've never been here before. Wow, it's like an old mall. And then below, I see. Okay, so this is the Odaculine entrance. Okay, so we're still in this little mall above the train station here. And I like this scene here because you can see a lot of people walking by from above. And because I have the railing to sort of perch my camera here, I can really drag my shutter and try to get some serious motion blur on these people. So I'm down to one second, which if I balance it just right, I should be able to get it steady enough to get this nice motion blur. So we're on F11 and one second. Honestly, one second is probably too much. I don't need to go to one second. I'm gonna go to half a second. Half a second will be plenty, and it will make it easier to hold it steady, because half a second, people will already be blurry enough. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. Even a half is a little bit much. Let's go to a fourth only. There we go. Up to a fourth of a second. And right now, a moment ago, we walked by, it was a lot more people. Right now, it's a little bit kind of low on the amount. I want more. I bet you when a train arrives down underground and all the people get off the train, it's going to get a lot more crowded. In the meantime, I'm just going to work on my composition. So I'm trying sort of different things. I want to get it as minimal as I can. Less is more here, right? There we go. That's a pretty cool minimal scene. Maybe let's go to the other side. Okay, and then I think I'll be able to shoot more straight down into the people and see what that looks like. So now on this side, I'm realizing that, okay, the motion blur is okay, but maybe no motion blur is better because there's some cool stuff going on here. Like that lady that just went in that door. That was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I still had her on a 60th, or not on a 4th, I should say. Okay, I'm going to put it back on 125th. Not all the way fast, f2.8. See what that looks like, and I'm gonna hope that somebody comes into this scene again. There we go. That was cool. That was cool. That paid off. That paid off. So, although it's not like a pure tour of the area. 
this is how I shoot. I kind of wander around, follow my nose, and just whatever interests me, I try to shoot it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I move on. I mean, I think that's how everybody shoots. There's nothing unique about this. But just to kind of uh, reiterate that that's how, how it goes. I go to 250 here. Maybe. Nice. That's pretty neat. I like that. Got this uh, girl on the escalator here. Maybe get somebody else. I like this escalator. That's pretty cool. So we're going to move on. So I keep getting sidetracked, right? I keep stopping to mess around with stuff. And that's okay. That's the point. That's the point. That's how you find great shots. You let your creativity and your curiosity, that's I think a better word. It's not about being creative because kind of the fundamental element of what, what becomes creativity is curiosity. You have to wonder first, hmm, what's that going to look like? Can I get a good shot here? And then if you fail, that's okay. Street photography is all about failure. You need to you know, try stuff and fail and then eventually you might get something good. And let's go down here. And there is a one really cool spot that I know in this area. There's a really cool neon sign. We're going to play around with that scene a little bit. Okay, so here's a scene that I really like. This is a bit of a, a famous spot where like a lot of people come to shoot this karaoke neon sign, but it's really nice. So I wanna work the scene here a little bit. I really like this location. So first I'm just gonna do a nice standard shot there with some people going by on their bikes over there, which is cool. I mean, that's already pretty nice. A lot of people come in. Basically I'm using, I have my neon sign in the frame, which is great. And then I'm using this shop window, shop front, for silhouettes. I want people to walk past it and they're gonna be nice silhouettes. So combining a couple different concepts here. Beautiful, that's a great one in terms of timing at least. I liked it. And then let's get a little closer. I'm gonna get maybe a shot like this. It'd be really cool to get somebody going in there. But for now, this will have to do. Oh, and I just said that, and here we go. Cool. That was pretty cool. Not kind of a messy composition because things are off-centered here. But that turned out sweet. Okay. I'm just going to get one more like this. Just a simple shot of the whole thing just to show how nice and colorful this looks. Okay, I'm on 160 f2.8 and the ISO was only 200 for that shot, so that's great. But now I want to go back and use some of these other things in the environment. There are some reflective surfaces and stuff to see if I can get a more creative composition. So like over here, there's this metallic surface which creates all kinds of cool effects. And this is where, this is one thing where I really love this particular camera because the lens is so small on the front, and I don't mean the length, I mean the opening of the lens, it makes this pretty small surface actually feel bigger. It feels like, you know, I can get the camera closer to it, the actual, you know, aperture of the camera, the, where the light's coming in. And I'm getting this really cool swirly reflection effect, which is very common with these brushed aluminum or steel, whatever material that is, metal surfaces. So that's really sweet. Very cool. As I was doing that, I see that the marble here is also shiny. Again, with a bigger camera, I wouldn't be able to do this. But with this little guy, so conveniently small, to put it right there, I'm getting a bit of this neon. Now, it's not quite wide angle enough, unfortunately, to get a lot of it. But I am getting some of the neon reflecting on this, this black surface. So that's nice. Now, let's try the same thing on the other side, because this building is even shinier these big bright, you know, big glass windows. And by the way, this wasn't here a couple of months ago. I mean, it, well, it was here, but it was under construction. So this building was under construction for a long time. And now that it's done, it's proven to be an interesting 
you know, element in an already interesting scene. Yeah, I rather like that. I'm going to try it again, not using the glass, but using the steel element here, the same as the one on the other side. Okay, and I'm doing it as a portrait right now. I'm, I'm not using snap focus for any of these. These are all focused on something in the background there because the background is so bright and high contrast that it's totally fine. And then I'm realizing that I think a landscape composition would be better here. I think this is my favorite composition right now. And now we just need the right subject in the right place. Now I'm on a 60th, the ISO is 200, but I'm gonna go back to AV, which is gonna give me my one over 250 minimum shutter. And the reason I chose that is because the ISO is now on 640. It's not really that high. It's still very, very nice. And I'll get sharper silhouettes. My silhouettes will be not blurred. They'll be in completely sharp, which is what I'm, I think it's gonna look better here. I think the blurred silhouettes are okay. I think a nice sharp silhouette's gonna look really good. So I just need a nice subject. Ooh, that was good. Somebody else. Cool. Okay. Sweet. Okay, so work the scene a little bit here. We're gonna move on, keep going around the corner and check out the main street a little bit more. So we were just about to wrap it up. We thought, okay, that's enough. We got some stuff, time to call it a night. And then I saw those two huge ads over there, which were for nothing. They're just for green fields and trees. And that was a pretty cool scene. And using the car is something I've done before. I like using the reflections off of cars because cars bend light and everything in such strange and interesting ways. So black you know, sports car, whatever that is, parked over there made it a nice, interesting scene. The actual subject, the guy standing there, wasn't the most interesting in the world. I know. But he, he worked, he worked in there. I like this blue mask, which matched the blue sky of the, of the sign. So that's pretty cool. I, I quite like that, actually. Okay, everyone, that's about it for tonight in Shima I You know, we kind of explored the streets, we covered some of the actual area, but then we also sort of got hung up around the train station and that train crossing, the neon sign. And even just now, that scene was really cool in the parking lot. That was a bit of a surprise right at the end there. So I kind of, you know, covered some different things I keep in mind when I'm doing photography at night with my Rico. Um, I hope you found that interesting. And of course, please like the video, leave a comment if you want. I will gladly answer any questions you might have about what I did today in this video. And of course, please subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys next time.